Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn the construction of a similar triangle. So, we have to construct an isosceles triangle whose base is 8 cm and altitude is 4 cm. Then, we need to draw another triangle whose sides are 1 and a half times 1, 1 by 2 times the corresponding sides of the isosceles triangle. So, what is the scale factor given here? 1, 1 by 2 times that is the scale factor is given as scale factor is given as 1, 1 by 2 that is in as a written as a mixed fraction. So, how to convert it into improper fraction? We need to multiply this 2 with 1, 2 1s are 2 and then we need to add the numerator. We have to multiply these 2 and we need to add this the result numerator to the result. So, 1 into 2 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3 by 2. Here the scale factor is 3 by 2. As we have discussed earlier in the previous video that if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, then the value of this fraction will be greater than 1. So, in this case we got scale factor greater than 1. Also, when the scale factor is greater than 1, the resultant similar triangle will be enlarged. Enlarged means larger than the original triangle. So, if the scale because here the scale factor is greater than 1, we will get an enlarged figure. So, let us draw the rough diagram for that. So, suppose this is the actual triangle that we are having with the base 8 centimeters and altitude 4 centimeters. So, the similar triangle will be larger than the actual triangle. So, if this is B dash, if this is B, this vertex will be B dash because this is C, the vertex over here will be C dash. Now, this is the difference. When we had to draw the diminished figure, we were getting this B dash and C dash inside the actual triangle and in case of enlarged figure, this B dash and C dash will come outside the triangle. So, before constructing this, let us understand the question first. Construct an isosceles triangle whose base is 8 centimeters and altitude is 4 centimeters. So, then we have to draw another triangle whose side is 1, 1 by 2 times the corresponding sides of the isosceles triangle. So, what we will uh, what we will be doing before we construct, we will just discuss what we are going actually to do. So, we need to draw a base of 8 centimeters, then we need to draw a perpendicular. We need to draw the altitude. For that, we will draw the perpendicular bisector. We will draw the perpendicular bisector. So, when we draw the perpendicular bisector, each point on the perpendicular bisector will be equidistant from both the points A and B. Whichever point you take, it will be at an equal distance from A and B. So, in this way, if I join these two sides, this from this point to A and from this point to B, the length of suppose this is C, AC will be equal to BC. Suppose if I join this point to A and this point to B, then again the length of this side will be equal to this side. It means each point on the perpendicular bisector will be at an equal distance from 
both the vertices A and B. Now instead of 8 centimeters, just to enlarge our figure in this demonstration, let us take it as 12 centimeters. Okay. So, while constructing on paper, uh, paper you can take 8 centimeters. So, what am I doing here? I have to draw a base of 12 centimeters. So, let us draw a line of length 12 centimeters. Mark these points as A and B. Mark these points as A and B. Now, because we have to construct an isosceles triangle, what we are going to do? We are to going to draw a perpendicular bisector because also altitude is given, is not it? So, we will draw a perpendicular bisector. Now, how to draw the perpendicular bisector? We will take the compass and adjust it, we will keep it at any of the vertices A or B. Now, as you can see, the radius of this compass is more than half. So, we have to what we have to do actually? We have to take more than half the length of the base and from vertex A, we will draw an arc. We will draw an arc above and at the same time, we will draw an arc below. Without changing the measurement, we will draw another arc below one at the top and one at the bottom below the line I mean one above the line and one below the line. Without changing the radius now we will keep the metal pointer at vertex B and we will draw another arc which intersects the previous arc. Remember, we did not change the radius. Now, keeping the same radius, we will draw another arc above the line AB to intersect the previous arc. These point of intersections should be joined to get the perpendicular bisector. Let us join this using a scale. This is the perpendicular bisector which makes an angle 90 degrees with the base and also it divides the base into two equal halves. Now, as we have discussed that each point on this point will be equidistant from the both the vertices A and B, both the points A and B. So, also the altitude is given as 4 centimeters. So, we need to take a compass and measure a radius of 4 centimeters. Now, this is 4 centimeters. And now we have to place this at the point of intersection here, the perpendicular bisector and AB and we need to draw an arc which intersects the perpendicular bisector at, bisector at some point. Let us mark this point as vertex C. Now, we, to join, we need to join AC and BC because this C is at an equal distance from A and B, AC will be equal to BC. Hence, our triangle is an isosceles triangle. So, let us draw a line which is making an acute angle with the base. Let this be AX 
ray which is making an acute angle with the base. Now look at the scale factor, the maximum of the numerator and denominator is 3, so we will mark 3 equidistant points, we will mark 3 equidistant points. So let this be, let us take 2 centimeter, at 2 centimeter we will mark 1 point and then again at 4 centimeters and then 6 centimeters. Now, from this, let this let us mark these points as A1, and this is as A2, and this point as A3. You can use compass also to mark the equidistant point. So, now what is the denominator? Denominator is 2. So, from A to, to B, we will draw a line. We will join A to and B. First figure, we have to extend our sides AB and Let us extend this side to some extent and also AC also to the to some extent. Now because the numerator is 3, we have to draw a line through A3 parallel to A2B. For that we will take the set square. We will take the set square and we will adjust the position of this in such a manner that it is parallel to A to B. Now we will fix the position of this set square using the scale. What do we have to do? We have to take the scale and fix the position of this set square. We have to move this set square to because the numerator is 3 to A3 we have to move this. Now that the set square position is fixed, we can move it to draw the parallel lines. This should be moved until the point A3 is reached. Now let us join let us join A3 and extended AB. Keeping it aside. So, this new point is called as B dash. Now, A B dash is the base of the similar triangle. To get the third side, we have to draw a line parallel to B C from B dash. We will use the set square again for this purpose. This time, we have to set this set square parallel to BC. It should be adjusted so that it is parallel to 
B C. Now that it is parallel to B C, we have to fix the position of this set square using our scale. We have to fix the position of the set square using the scale. Now that it is fixed, the set square can be moved to draw parallel lines to BC. Till which point it should be moved? To the point B dash. Now we will join B dash to this extended AC. Mark this point as C dash. This triangle A, B dash, C dash is the required enlarged figure or similar triangle. This is the required similar triangle. A, B dash and C dash is the required similar triangle triangle. Let us quickly recapitulate what we have, what are the steps we have taken for the construction of this similar triangle. First we have drawn AB the base of 12 centimeters, then we have drawn this one red line 12 centimeter, then we have drawn a perpendicular bisector to it then from this point O we have drawn a, an arc of radius 4 centimeters. We have joined this AC and CB right. In order to draw this perpendicular bisector we have to take the radius of the compass more than half and draw an arc above and draw an arc below from both the points A and B. When you keep at A you will get this arc and down this arc and then from point B we, will get with, we should not change the radius of the compass. This is the arc you get above and this is the arc you get below. If you join these two points, the length of the perpendicular bisector need not be measured, just you have to draw using the scale roughly. You can extend it further based on our requirements. Now we have to draw a ray from, uh, draw an arc from point O. What is the radius of this one? This is 4 centimeters. We have to join then AC and CB. This ABC is the isosceles triangle. Then we have to draw a ray making an acute angle. AX is the ray making an acute angle with AB. Then we have to observe the scale factor. We have to see the maximum number of numerator, uh, maximum number that is you have to compare numerator and denominator. So, 3 is the maximum number. So, we are dividing this AX ray into 3 equidistant points. Then we have to look for the denominator, it is 2. So, we have to join A2 to B. Then now we, at this point you have to look at the numerator that is 3. So, from A3 we have to draw a line parallel to the previous one that is A to B. Then this will meet this extended because this is coming outside. So, we need to extend this AB. So, it will meet the extended AB at B dash. As a last step, we have to draw a line parallel to BC from this B dash using again set square. You will get BC dash. This A, B dash, C dash is the required isosceles triangle which is 1, 1 by 2 times the corresponding sides. You need not get confused why I have taken this 12 instead of 8 in order to enlarge the figure on the screen. You can take, you, while you are making it on the paper, you can take 8 centimeter itself.